Hello and welcome to About Books. On this edition of the show, I'll be speaking to Anne Goodwin about her career and debut novel, Sugar and Snails. Later in the show, we'll be meeting Charlie Lear of Read Now, Write Now, who has developed a pioneering book exchange program in partnership with Mersey Travel. But first tonight, Anne Goodwin. After 25 years as a clinical psychologist in Newcastle and Nottinghamshire, Anne turned to writing and reviewing fiction. With over 60 short stories to her name, she's also a writer of literary blogs. And aside from writing, Anne is a volunteer ranger in the Peak District National Park where she leads a yearly walk around Jane Eyre territory. Her first published novel, Sugar and Snails, tells the secret story of Diana Dodworth, who, at 15, takes the opportunity radically to alter the trajectory of her life and escape the constraints of her small-town existence. Thirty years on, she can't help scratching at her decision like a scabbed wound. To safeguard her secret, she's kept other people at a distance. Until, that is, Simon Jenkins sweeps into her life. I spoke with Anne recently to find out more. I'm here with Anne Goodwin, who's the author of Sugar and Snails, which I think is a fantastic title. Welcome to the show, Anne. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. I'm really glad to have been able to ask you on. Tell us about this book, right. which came to me through a colleague, actually, where I work, and I'm so pleased that it did. Thank you. Sugar and Snails is a midlife coming-of-age story about a woman who has kept her past identity a secret for 30 years. She's done reasonably well in life. She's got a decent job, she's got her own house, but because of her secret she's kept herself at a distance from other people, she hasn't gone for promotion in her work and she's avoided intimate relationships. Yeah. But she seems to be going on okay until at a, at a dinner party she meets Simon. And that's a fantastic <laughs> Thank you, fantastic. thank you. So she's not sure about Simon initially, however they bond over a mutual interest in Cairo, in Egypt. He wants to go there to see the pyramids and she's been there before as a child, as an adolescent at 15. So it triggers some It triggers some, some memories, memories for her. Yeah, which we don't want to give away the secret, do we? We won't give away the to secret, to no, no. But initially those memories are very positive yeah. for her. And that, so the relationship develops with, with Simon and until he um, gets the opportunity actually to go to Cairo for his work. And of course, he just automatically expects that Diana will go out and meet him there. But for her, this is yeah. impossible. Yeah, she, yeah. She's, it's really, there are practical issues, but there are uh, psychological issues for her about going back that place, but it's really difficult for her to give any um, explanation to Simon as to why. Because there's a lot about silence and secrecy mm. and the pressure and the weight of that, isn't there? Mm. And you focus on the impact of her past um, in terms of how she, the, the, not just in terms of how she avoids key scenarios and situations as an adult, but also in terms of the um, the harm that she sometimes does to herself in order to gain some kind of relief mm. from it. I don't know mm. if you're comfortable talking a little bit about that. It's very hard hitting, happens yeah. really from the first, yeah. the self harm. Yeah. Well, she, she's really self harmed since childhood. Yeah. And um, because the, the issue that she has is, is both physical and, and psychological. Mm. And so that's one way of expressing herself, or when things really get to the limit point. As an adult, she's managed to put that behind her for a number of years. However, a crisis really with, with Simon, Does where it looks that? like mm. she's really stuck, and then that's when she cuts herself, which, as you say, is quite graphically described in the opening chapter. Why did you do that in that way and at that mm. time? Because I remember my dr mm. jaw kind of <laughs> yeah. dropping open, but it did very much impact yeah. on me in a way in which I think if you'd done it later, it, it might not have yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, it was a bit of a gamble, really, whether to start with that, because it is quite shocking. And uh, sometimes at readings, people have been I was going to ask tip, whether tip. you read those sections. I do, yeah. do you check the audience comfortable beforehand or do you just go I've, for it and let I've them vote done, the I've done both, really, right. because it is quite hard to really sort of um, 
and they say it clearly in a way that people can anticipate how it is going to affect them. So mostly I haven't done, although I have done as well. As well. And um, yeah, I mean, it can sort of affect you kind of physically mm. hearing it. Um, but that's her situation. I think, I think you know, we're, we're right into this is what her life has been like. It is that that strong I guess. Did you do this to, to in an altruistic sense to connect with other people who her, who are genuinely suffering or did you want to find some way of constructing how painful her past was and this seemed like a good metaphor for it? Yeah yeah I mean it, it's a way of illustrating really just how hard her life has been yeah. that um, he, you know she's attacking her own body and yeah, unfortunately, that is an issue actually for a lot of people and an increasing men problem. And yeah, men and women, in, in de people. indeed. So, yeah. so again, um, it's good for that to be out in the open, I guess. Even for though the book's to called Sugar it. and Snails, which is obviously a reference to childhood on some level, isn't it, metaphorically? You don't sugarcoat that section and that, that, mm. that trope, and I think that's yeah. important. Yeah, but hopefully, it's not melodramatic either, no. and, and that she is quite. I think emotionally distant at that point as well, that she, so it's described um, quite matter-of-factly in one le on one level. Almost I, I cinematically, yeah, I thought, in yeah, places too. Yeah, yeah. Would you say, in terms of her, without wanting to give it away, in terms of her life trajectory, that the book is a positive one that's got hope at the end, or...? Uh, well, the ending is... Um, ambiguous to a degree but I think it's hopeful Good. she's yeah. she's she's she has made one a major change by that point in in her life and there are other things that might happen we, we have there's to see there's a sense of possibility that mm. this isn't the, the end of her story mm. I like that are you writing more of her life I mean, you're writing at the moment what um, are you, what are you I've I've left her about? there for now actually okay. for, um, I think she does have much more story but I'm not Right, at, at, at the moment. Yeah. No. What are you doing right now? So, at the moment, my um, I'm in the process of editing my second novel, which is called Underneath, oh, which will be out um, in May next year. Cool. And that is um, a story about. Um, it's, it's a bit grisly. <laughs> <laughs> a story about a man who's kept a woman um, in the cellar. Oh what wow, Jean Fowles. Yeah, there's, there's those elements in it. it, and it's mostly actually really about relationships and about how we, the, the devastating nature for, for him of a relationship breaking down and, okay, and, yeah. and about loss. Loss of and control. A, yeah, yeah. And, and abandonment. Is that published by Inspired Quill, which that published will, this one? Yeah, that's by the same publisher, yeah. Do you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about yeah. their work? Because it's yes. important what they do, yes. I think. Yes, Inspired Quill is, is a very small press. I think they've been operating now for just five years. A very young and enterprising... Yay. Yeah. Go on, go on. <laughs> and um, they... Um, they operate as, as a social enterprise, so that their ambitions, when they when they they made enough money, is to to do uh, positive works in the community to develop disadvantaged people. But with with my novel, um, they're giving ten percent of the profits to a, a youth ch charity for at risk youth. So they're oh, trying to to put put things back into areas of charity work that actually reflect what you're doing in the text. The yes, novel. that are very relevant. To Did the, you choose to the charity yourself? We chose it together. Oh, that's ace. Yeah, yeah. I love that yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say you're a political writer? Um, with a very small P, I would, <laughs> I would say. I mean... There's quite a lot about the medical profession here and about yeah. agencies that are meant to help the uh, the vulnerable. Yes, yes, and, and, and the family and, unit. And about marginalised groups of, of people. So to that degree, yes, I, I, would, I would say so, but I think that the main purpose of a novel is to, to entertain and to, to tell a story in, a, in an engaging way. Mm. I think but, that the story definitely isn't... Um, marginalised by any kind of uh, political invective you're bringing to it or anything like that. But I do think you've got a set of socialist principles that you're employing, I would say. Yeah, don't mind me outing you as a socialist. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I, uh, that would offend me in any way at all. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your, what you'd suggest to other people 
um, who are in a position that they've got something that they want to write, they think it's important, they want to get it out there, how would you advise them to go about that? Um, I mean, I think, first of all, deciding whether it's fiction or non-fiction that they, that they want to write. I mean, I, I'm, I wouldn't know how to go about writing sort of creative non, non-fiction. I think for fiction, um, again, really think about the story, be led by the story, be led by the characters, and put them in the situation and see what happens. To Have it. you got any particular literary influences? Would you advise them to read as much as to write? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, read read anything and read contemporary literature. I mean, I read about um, over 100 novels a year. Um, oh, wow. But my, yeah. Oh, that's a bliss. <laughs> it, it is. It's very, very nice. I don't have much social life. <laughs> How did you start writing? Um, well, I've written really all my life from childhood, and but then um, work took over, um, I worked as a clinical psychologist. Okay, I, that makes sense. Um, so yeah. I, I did various degrees and so I was writing dissertations rather than writing fiction. And then like uh, happens to a lot of people, um, something happens in, in your life where you have to take stock. I had a, a bereavement and I really had to think about where I was going you know, with, with, with my life and just started to take um, a little bit more time for, for myself. You. And yeah. this ambition that really, I'd had all my life, but never really even dared voice even to myself, because it seemed such a strange thing to do, to, to write a novel. And here I am with my first novel published. I'm very glad you are. It's fantastic that you've come in to talk to us about it. Good luck with the second book Thank and you with your future much. projects. So that's Anne Goodwin, Sugar and Snails. Train journeys can be long and boring, but it can be a good time to relax and find time to immerse yourself in a book. And what better place to find a book than at a train station? Charlie Lear of Read Now, Write Now developed a partnership with Mersey Rail in trialling a number of book exchanges on their stations. People, not just rail users, will be able to take books from these exchanges and then when they've read them, they can put them back. Tim Quinn caught up with Charlie at Port Sunlight Station to find out more. The day about books is here in Port Sunlight and I've come to exchange some books at Port Sunlight Station. What's that all about? Let's go and find out. Welcome to Port Sunlight Station. And welcome to you to Port Sunlight Station as well. And there's something a little bit different about this station. There has been over the last few weeks, something has definitely happened. It's just a book uh, exchange. Yeah. Well, I believe this is your handiwork. It is indeed. Myself and Mersey Rail have been planning this for a year, and we've put five book exchanges into stations across the rural line of Mersey Rail. And if it works, we're going to open uh, book exchanges across the network if we can as well. What, what's the idea behind this? I mean, I, I walk into the station, there's the usual things here. I can take a photo of myself and my passport if I like. And then there's a bookcase with books. What, what is your thinking behind this? The idea came from travelling uh, from West Kirby to Liverpool every day during the week for 17 years. And it was a lovely journey, half hour, very quick, but sometimes it became monotonous. And if I had a book, it would last only a few seconds and I'd have time to read. And I never used to find other times to read at home because I had a child as well and a busy lifestyle. And so the idea of putting books into stations, and the stations in all the major sort of uh, villages and towns across Merseyside, was just an idea I had that people could say, pick up a book, read it, take it home, and then maybe, well, hopefully, put it back and give us some feedback as to what they thought about the project itself and uh, what they thought about the book as well. So no money is exchanged. This is, this is free. This is free for everyone to use. Um, all the books have been donated by members of the public and rural libraries as well have given us quite a few books. This bookcase and four others was donated by IKEA in Warrington for free. Um, so we've been very grateful. Obviously we've been put up by the Mersey Rails uh, contractors and not by me. So they should be um, here for quite some time. So you say the books are they? Donated by where do they come from? They're from well, libraries well, from, and all sorts. Well, we're a library, it's mainly West Kirby Library, but um, 
people can do this as if they can bring and donate books and what stuff. we're saying to you them is if you want to donate a book yeah. then get in contact with me yeah. uh, there will be a sign saying uh, where to contact there's a temporary one now um, and I'll come and pick them up and what I'm doing I'm putting them all onto a spreadsheet with numbers uh, who the author is what sort of genre they are and I'm putting them into different um, stations and what I want is people to come back and say I borrowed Dominion by CJ Sampson uh, and give me some feedback about it and obviously put it back so other people can use it too because the idea about using second-hand books is about recycling you buy a book you read it you might want to read it again or keep it yourself to read it in the future or just have it there as part of it in your lounge um, but books can be read and read and read again it's not like an old record which starts to get a bit scratchy there's further for everyone to, uh, to read and use so the idea is public giving the books for other members of the public quite excited me and when I approached Merseyrail about that they thought that was a good idea too and also integration with the community uh, so Merseyrail does have stations all around the place and if we can utilize the space and especially you know this sort of concourse here and um, they're very happy to get involved who is your target audience do you have one um, well, it's many commuters, and that starts off with the people going into work in the day, in the morning time, coming back. But obviously, in the daytime, you've got uh, retired people and uh, mums and dads with children. And so, I mean, the, the books here are many for adults as well. We're starting to get more children's stories, mm. and we put those. I noticed that. The, the, the yeah. kids' stories here for children. They're very, very popular as well. Um, one thing we may look at in the future is actually having little writing pads for people to write their own stories about their journey and then write stories and we can look at those as well and maybe publish them as well but all about their journeys to and from where they're going as well it's an interesting selection of books i mean it, it covers the spectrum really doesn't it i think so and it's it's funny because I've had about 10 different people donating and the libraries and you do get the same sort of authors being uh, Lee Childs with uh, Jack Reach is very very popular at the moment um, Joe Nesbo is becoming quite popular um, and you got Jodie Picot I think that's how you pronounce her name as well so you're seeing a lot of very popular authors as well a lot of these books are pretty much brand new um, and they've hardly been touched and so they look really good but then you do get the older books as well. I'm really happy that they're still coming, you know, that um, Clive James, Unreliable Memoirs. Um, it's been read quite a few times, yeah. it's brown, yeah. but you can still read it. So Rust, any type rusty of book, staples. Rusty Staples, Thank any you. type of book which should still be read, you know, we want to put out on that. Yeah. I, you came up with the scheme? This I came up with the scheme. I mean, where, where did the idea come from? Well, I've heard of book what exchanges before. Yeah. I mean, they've been, they've been out there and some people have been putting them into little villages. But the idea of having a network of them, yeah. where if I, say, got on the train at West Kirby or um, Bromborough, I'm in Liverpool City Centre, I could pick up a book and if there's an exchange there, I can put it back there. Or I'm going to somewhere else, I can pick up a book and put it back somewhere else as well. So it's just convenience for people as well. I mean, I do want people to take the books and actually take them home because I might read quite quickly, but some people might not be able to. But the idea is once they finish with it, you know, we do want them to put it back and let other people use it. Mm. How many stations? Is it available at now? This? At the moment, it's available at five stations. Okay. And we're going to have a little trial period, uh, just one or two months. And if it works, we're getting good feedback and we're getting people donating the books. Then we're going to open to as many stations as possible. What are the stations? It's, uh, at, at the, the moment, moment, it's at Hoylake, Manor Road, Mells, here at Port Sunlight, and also at Bromborough Station as well. It's obviously a subject close to your heart. Well, I, I run a literacy company as well, oh. so the idea is called, it's called Read Now, Write Now, and it's getting people into reading, obviously reading now, uh, and writing as well. So as well as trying to bring people into reading, I'm trying to get people into writing stories. So I do a lot of work with children. Mm. I do work in schools, doing creative writing workshops. I do after school with children. I'm at, there some people, some of the kids like to write anyway. Some don't really know much about it as well so we're getting all abilities and all ages coming in and then um, we're doing summer schools as well for children a lot of people have been saying about the summer schools uh, when the schools are finished are just mainly sports based as well and there's mm. a lot of children there who uh, would rather do something more creative so that's what we're looking at doing this summer great uh, you're a writer yourself I am a writer I, I mainly write ghost stories short stories and I do storytelling events for people and I go to, say, libraries or schools or other places, and I read 
children's ghost stories, which I've written myself. And hopefully, because I've got an 11 year old daughter, I sort of know what sort of things scur them. So it might not be set in a Victorian mausoleum, but it might be set somewhere which could be their home or their street. So they can visualize it straight away. You've and tried out on your daughter first? I do, yes. Yeah. Uh, we had a next door She's neighbor. suitably scared um, by her father's storytelling. Yes, 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 she is. She's like me. She gets scared quite easily. Uh, yeah, you were telling me that, uh, earlier that um, you grew up in a haunted house. Yes, at the weekends I had to go and stay at my dad's house. Oh. Um, and it was an 18th century farmhouse. And it was very, very spooky. And I, I, I do believe in ghosts. And so maybe I was more prone to thinking about this. Um, but I did used to think that if I just turned my head, there was someone there. And sometimes it used to get quite cold in certain places as well. So I think, I mean, I didn't like that. I mean, it was quite scary, but I think growing up, um, the idea of being scared or making other people scared in a nice, friendly way yeah. um, um, is what I like to do, basically. I mean, I'm, I'm writing my first novel. I've finished it now, so I'm looking to get that published for Christmas because it is set at Christmas time. But it is a ghost story. You know, for children. Fantastic. Will we see it on the shelves well, at a station near you? Well, you might do. I'm um, trying to use second-hand books, but maybe it will go straight <laughs> onto the exchange. If, it's, if people buy it, they may put it back there straight away. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing that. The scheme is running already. Yes. Um, and what's the reaction you've had from the public so far? Well, you can see we, we put these books up last Saturday and it was pretty much full mm. and there's gaps in places, so people are taking the books. Um, it's only been going a few weeks now, so we've already had a, a bit of feedback now, but everyone's been absolutely positive thinking it's an absolutely great idea yeah. to have books on stations um, and to get more people reading. I've not had a bad word about it. I mean, some people have said that, oh, some books might be stolen or the place might be trashed, but I, I trust people more than that. And it is an idea of trust. But working with some schools to uh, partner us uh, and look after them or adopt a book exchange, like in Manor Road Station, we have Holy Coda Trinity and in September, they're gonna come back and they're going to make it look a bit more friendly and uh, put their own books on there as well and that they, they can look after it and the idea about that is that children grow up owning something like this and they will won't sort of try and break it or ruin it or anything like that but be quite proud of the fact that they are doing something positive in their community it's a fantastic idea absolutely fantastic idea and we wish you well and look forward to seeing this growing to every railway station thank you very much Thanks for watching. See you next time on About Books.